The visiting Salem Sabres are led tonight by power forward Joe Burton, the 6'7 product from Oregon State University, pulled down 27 rebounds over a week ago, averaging over 17 for the season. The Volcanoes counter with one of their big men coming off of injured reserve, 7-foot center from the University of Southern Mississippi, Gio Bain, averaging over two blocks a game, leading the IBL. Great matchup tonight, I-5 rivals. The Volcanoes versus the Sabres. Coming your way on FVTV Channel 11 next. Murray over to Blackley. Boy, someone took a picture of that. Freeman. Hartman for another three. Oh, yeah, baby. On fire. And there he is again, Josh Tarver. And Murray, he says, thank you very much. And he spots an open pit blood saw. Oh, yes. Down it. Look at the emotion. Very smart Look at the emotion. Player. This is your man. And a welcome basketball fans of all ages, shapes, and sizes to Vancouver, Washington, the campus of Clark College, the O'Connell Sports Center. We have set the stage. It's an event happening. It's in a local event. It's like the greatest local event ever on this Friday night. Joe Burton leading the visiting Salem Sabres against your hometown Vancouver Volcanoes on FETV Channel 11. And a perfect year at home so far, a win streak. Mike Koreski with you tonight on the broadcast. And to my right, the sidekick, the kickstand to the bike. It is Gary Akiyama. Gary, let's talk about tonight. We've got some more bodies for the Volcano suited up, which is great. But what have you been working on there? you got some numbers to share. i got some numbers. i got some information. I mean, uh, you know, we're halfway through the season, roughly. And if there's a pivotal game that I think uh, that's going to impact the Volcanoes, I really think it's tonight's game. I really do. Volcanoes, you know, eight wins, three losses. Salem Sabres, a very dangerous team, even though they're four and five, because they've won their last four of their six games. But what makes that even more in intimidating to me with the numbers, uh, Mav, you got Joe Burton a few games ago against Portland, 27 rebounds, missed the tying the record by two. And then against the Nippon Tornadoes, you got Daniel Dean, a former Volcano. He, he tied uh, our former uh, Volcano, Bryson McKenzie, for that 29 rebounds. So 27 rebounds, 29 rebounds. These guys control the boards. A couple of Oregon State glass cleaners. And you wouldn't have it any other way, would you, Gary? <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way but unless there were Volcanoes, though. And one quick thought before we uh, get this thing going. A quick thought is we're coming into half number two of the IBL season, the second half, and we will talk to you a little bit later tonight about what that means and how the teams gear up for the second half of the year and the subsequent playoff push. But tonight should be a great one on FETV Channel 11. It's the Volcanoes versus the Salem Sabres, and we'll be right back. And welcome back to the O'Connell Sports Center, the campus of Clark College, the site of tonight's IBL contest between the visiting Salem Sabres 
four and five on the year, and the hometown Vancouver Volcanoes eight and three on the year. However, unbeaten at home, striving for the second ever unbeaten home record in franchise history. And there you can see the banner, 2011 IBL champions. When we ran the table, the tourney was here too. So that was a, a stroke of genius on the part of the IBL officials to grant us that tournament. But we'll see what happens in the future. We're going to go on the road and earn it this time. Mike Koreski with you tonight on the broadcast. And the Robin to my Batman, that's Gary Akiyama. How are you tonight, Gary? Talk to me a little bit about this game. We were, we've been talking a little bit tonight. We've got lots of bodies for the Volcanoes. We've got a couple of old friends back. And uh, set it up. Let's talk. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad they're back, too, because it looked like a disabled list there for, for a few games. But, you know, the Volcanoes, going to be a tough game. Here's what they got to do, Mav, to win. I think they got to play aggressive. they got to play and start quickly. Well, what I mean by that, they don't, don't let the Sabres set up their defense. we got to get in our groove early and uh, penetrate to the basket with uh, Andre 3000 there and Josh Tarver. They're known to penetrate that bucket. We've got to set good picks and good screens for us to, to uh, make the threes. And really, we need to play tall inside, not just Geo Bain tall, but the whole inside game, we got to be tall. Well, speaking of tall, like you said, Geo Bain is back. He's been hurt for a couple of weeks. And of course, like we say about the International Basketball League, the IBL, it's the IBL because last week, Coach Navarro was telling us he might be done for the year. Tonight we get here on the roster, he's listed as injured reserve, but then when Joe marked off the starters, there he was. Yeah, these guys want to play whether they're hurt or not. I mean, some of them are resting, of course, like Mike Ward. Uh, hopefully he'll be back Sunday, I hope. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that what you're hearing? That's what Joe said, so, you know, it's the able, <laughs> so who knows? That's right, because last week Joe thought he was done. It right. was a real nasty angle yeah. turn and some popping going on. Uh, the other thing about, speaking of tall, Alex Tiefenthaler, back with the Volcanoes, number 34, 6'10", from Concordia. Great outside shooting big man, Gary. Very skilled with that. Kind of an overseas game, if you will. Yeah, pretty much yeah. Tief is a unknown quantity, you know, this year because he hasn't played that much, but he has still has it. He can make that three-point shot very easily for a big guy. That's, you know, music to the, your ears. Well, and he's been in and out of the Volcanoes because he was with, I think he's been with us two full seasons. I think it was two years ago he played for the first two games. Uh, personal stuff, life was getting going, so he needed to take a break from it. Uh, he was at training camp this year, and then uh, things weren't going so great, but now he's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's a gamer. I mean, he's in, the good part about that, as you mentioned, he's in great shape. Oh, definitely, Gary. When I saw him here at training camp, it was he had really kept himself together. So Daniel Dean, the ex-Oregon State Beaver and ex-Volcano for the Sabres, scores the first two of the game. Sabres are up two to nothing. And starters for the Sabres, number four, Dan Feast, 5'10 guard, Oregon State. Uh, but he didn't play. No, he attended. He, he had, that's right. I made that point, I think, the yeah. other game. Good, yeah. good, if, good catch there. If you have any Oregon State University stop, you bring it right here, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, because Gary will uh, either accept it or reject it. Also, the starters, number five, Mike Taylor, 6'5 guard, Harlem Globetrotters. Love reading that off, but he's having yep. a fantastic year for them, almost 17 points a game. We talked about Dean, 24, 6'9 forward, 14.4 points. A little over 11 rebounds a game. Uh, great stuff for him, the 29 boards, as Gary talked about. And then we have 11, Joe Burton. Great passing big man, over four assists a game to go with 13.3 points and 17 boards. And Scott Starkey, 33, 6'4", forward from Kamekata, CC. And for the Volcanoes, you're looking at Josh Tarver, number eight, from Oregon State. 20, Chehalis Tapscott, the Warrior, from uh, Luxembourg recently, also Portland State University. 23, Andre 3000. Andre Murray, 6'2 guard, Portland State. 31 forward, Paul Hafford, 6'4, Portland State and uh, Western Washington. And we talked about Geo Bain, top of the fork uh, broadcast, University of Southern Mississippi. And he missed that follow up there. Tapscott brings it down. It is 4 2 in favor of your Volcanoes. And Gary, if I'm talking too much, just come on in. You no, know, no, just you're, come you're, on you're in and fine. get us back to this game. Yeah. Uh, there's Hafford, 6 to 2. And Paul Hafford, Gary, is climbing up the ranks of the leading scorers in IBL history. He, he is, yeah. In fact, uh, I saw that on, on the website, made a note of that. Uh, yeah, let's talk, talk about that for, for a minute. All time leading scoring right now is Jacob Stevenson 
you know, his uh, uh, rival, well, not his rival, actually, it was his teammate last year. For five year. years. Yeah, in Bellingham with 2,389. And you're right, Paul Hafford, being very sneaky, has 2,329 total points. Yeah, he has played one more year than Stevenson, but uh, crazy stuff. And remember, our own guy, Mr. Volcano Pip Bloodsaw, held the record until this season when Stevenson overtook it about three weeks ago. And now here comes Paul. Yeah, so I, I think uh, it's not over yet. Pip will, will have some words on that, too. Well, Coach Navarro was pointing out, though, that uh, Pip hasn't been dropping 30 a night these days. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told him, I said, well, you got to make it happen, Joe. Make it happen. Yeah, yeah. And of, of course, I'm not going to tell you what he said, <laughs> but uh, it was a good time nonetheless. So 6-4 in favor of the Volcanoes, 922 left in the first quarter. So we have a stack out there coming for the inbounds play for the Sabres. Salem, Gary, really surprised me how good they have become this IBL season. Yeah, in talking with the owner uh, before the game, uh, Sterling, he, he thinks you know they're on. They're really put, coming into their own now, and I, I would label them probably the most dangerous team in the IBL right now. I would too. I think uh, even a little more than the Portland Chinooks. Yeah, I really yeah. would because the double beaver middle with <laughs> Dean and Burton, and then here comes Feast right here. Right over to number 33, and that layup is good for Scott Starkey. So they just have they have great role players, Gary. They have a deep bench, and uh, they've really settled in. Uh, Taylor has really risen to the occasion here. Feast can shoot, and like I said, you have that double beaver middle. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know something different about what's different about Mike Taylor tonight, Mike? I want to see if you know this. What's well, it's different? The hair. It's the hair. That's <laughs> very good. Yeah, I, I think he was just feeling the pink mood that day. Uh, yeah, when he was here last time. Being a little pinkish, yeah, or purplish, or whatever yeah. it was. I, I think I think you were saying you tried that once and it it didn't do what you thought it was going to. Yeah, it doesn't look too good when you're Asian. <laughs> But up, bump. So, <laughs> Volcanoes 11, the Sabres 9. So, uh, very, but very astute, Gary, about his hair. But Joe Burton's hair, though, Birdman. Yeah, Birdman, as, as uh, Bob likes to call him. Yeah, Bob Pilata, <laughs> the, the czar of the truck out there. Much thanks to Digital, uh, the company that puts us on, Bob's company. And uh, that would be Beyond the Eye Productions. So, much love to you, Bob, and the crew. You guys make us look a lot better than we're supposed to and you make Mark and, and you know you also Mike you know you're smarter than you look <laughs> well that's ha that happens when you're Asian <laughs> but I'm bum. okay so Burton tipping is no good Bain pulls down that rebound welcome back Gio behind the back Tarver he brings it across the middle good defense for Starkey pulling out on Hafford there so Salem very good on the rotation so far but Andre Murray individual yeah. effort and it's his second week back and so good to have him back that's what they'll need to do this game penetrate like, like we were talking earlier him and Tarver if they can penetrate I, I think we'll have a you know really good chance at this game averaging almost 19 points a game almost five assists a game and almost four rebounds a game so the usual fantastic numbers for Andre Murray it's hard to it's hard to imagine the Volcanoes without him here and a wonderful pass from Hafford as well. And there we go. So 15-9 Volcanoes, a timeout on the floor. Salem doesn't like it getting loose. We're going to keep it right here, though, because it's a 30-second. And, you know, Gary, we've got a lot to say in 30 seconds. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so as we're looking at it, Gary, what are you seeing from the Volcanoes? There's a few smiles going on there. Why are they smiling? Yeah, I, th I think they're smiling because, you know, a lot of the guys are, are back. Uh, it's always been good team chemistry on the Volcanoes. And I notice right now they're, they're playing really loose, and that's good. They're not, they're not really getting intimidated by Salem. And, uh, you know, they've had good practices all this week, so they're really coming together as well. That's very true. Talking to assistant coach Jeff Christensen before the game, uh, he said Wednesday's practice was pretty good. They had some bodies yesterday. They had eight, they had eight bodies there, so at least they were able to run something. But, uh, yeah, we're looking pretty good tonight on the roster. It looks like the only missing body is Alex Hartman to this point. And, of course, Mike Ward, who is truly on injured reserve. Right, right. So, but, yeah, I think with, with the team it is, um, you know, I don't know if we're going to pick anybody else up. I mean, there's Josh Tarbert, who, uh, you know, has been really on fire as well. He's been playing good ball lately. 
I agree, and, and you know, Gary, this is the first year, this is his first season with the Volcanoes where he's been with us from the start. Because remember, two years ago on the championship run, he came in towards the last quarter of the season. Right. Last year he was on, he had the injury. Yes, he Like did. a week or two before the season started, and he came back with us, what, about the last four or five games. Right. So it's weird that he's been here for three years, yet it still feels new. Yeah, we had that, just that freak uh, bone injury or foot injury yes. that, that happened in practice in just the pickup game, actually. Yes. Playing some alumni, Gary, those uh, pesky beavers <laughs> injuring our players. Gary, you got to put a stop to this. Yeah, well, you know the beavers, they go all out, so it's kind of hard to control them sometimes. <laughs> They'll gnaw at you, that's for sure. So looking at Tarver's numbers, over 15 points a game, like you were saying, Gary, uh, 4.6 assists, 3.3 rebounds. But like I've said before in the past, his court vision, some of the best in the league. He can really see the floor. Yeah, and that, that's key to, to the volcano success this year as well. Oh, big slam there by fellow <laughs> Beave. <laughs> big Daniel, take it to the hole. 15-11, he closes the gap. 6.22 left in the first quarter. So Taps got out there. Dean bringing it up, the defense full for him. And he gets the rebound as well. And he was player of the week, Daniel Dean was, Gary. What a great story for him this year. Oh, yeah, great story. And those 29 ribbies, absolutely phenomenal. Well, in reading that he, when he got the player of the week, they did a little interview with him on the IBL website. You guys need to check that out, the IBL website, if you haven't, IBL.com. You have links to every team in the league, uh, a weekly newsletter as well. And in the newsletter, that interview, Dean said he wants to take it overseas. Yeah, well, yeah, the way he's playing and the way he's built, I don't think he's going to have an issue. Well, and when he was at our tryout camp, too, remember we talked about Tiefenthal was in shape. This guy, Daniel Dean, had dropped some serious weight from his last year at Oregon State. He, he did, yeah. So, yeah, very active. Ooh, that baby Gilbert. hook, that baby hook, man. Uh, he, he brings a flair to it, Gary. He really does the hooks and some of the and one passes and whatnot and weird angles. Yeah, love to have him here. Love to have him here. So Taps got skies for the rebound. Brings it back over to Tarver. Tarver's going to penetrate, though. And uh, they call the foul on Feast. And Feast is like, what? I got hit in the mouth. Really? But that's what happens. You know, ironically, Chehalis, uh, uh, even only 6'6", leads a Volcano team in rebounding. Oh, yeah. He had 40 points and 20 boards versus Japan last weekend, Gary. Yeah, that upped his average. He's now averaging about 13.8 ribbies a game. Yeah, he uh, pitched a tent for a lot of that game. Just uh, sat down the middle. So Hafford, there's that three. He's on Stevenson's tail for that scoring, that all-time scoring lead. Uh, great all-around ball player as well, Gary. You saw tonight with that nice little bounce pass to Murray on the break. He's good for a few of those a game. Yeah, I think when you were interviewing last last game, you know, he was saying his threes weren't quite there yet. He's been working on it, and that certainly tells me it's back. Agreed. So a couple of subs in the game. J.R. Moore for Chehalis Tapscott, and also early look for Kevin West uh, coming in there for Andre Murray. And we talked about Kevin West. He seems to be a one-man wrecking crew, like in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, so I'm really glad they're giving him a shot to run when the game is uh, still in hand. Yeah, yeah. Kevin West brings a whole dynamics to the game. You know, his excitement, his aggressiveness, and every, every time he's in, there's something happens, man. I agree with you totally. And he's uh, he has that high-rise ability. He can really sky above the rim, and he can airball shots just like that one. <laughs> he's got to warm up first. Yeah, exactly. And see, that was a problem our own rocket. Kind of the right, same thing. Right. He spots up a real nice shot, and then that string, that little string in his arm seems to yeah. go a little haywire. But uh, West will settle down. Uh, he should get a good run tonight. So props to the coaching staff for really recognizing what he's been doing the past few games. Yeah, Coach Navarro and, and, uh, and Coach uh, Christensen, you know, know these guys pretty well from co college days as well. So and I think they have it dialed in. And Daniel Dean coming to the line there for the Sabres. It's 18-13 Volcanoes. And Daniel Dean looking at his line so far, two of six from the field for four points, already five rebounds. Once again, I think they're one of the best rebounding teams in the league. Yeah, I think that tandem of, of Burton and Dean, uh, it's really hard to argue uh, any other teams better than them in, in those dynamics. Yeah, agreed with you on that. And once again, Dean, 14.4 points, a little over 11 points a game, so rock solid. Also solid there is Mr. Andre Murray. 
Uh, like I was trying to tell you earlier, Gary, it's hard to just imagine the Volcanoes without him. This is his fourth year, but it just feels like he has been that rock for us for a lot longer than that. Hey, he's been the rock, and he's been the inspiration for a lot of times for the team. Nice feed there. Yeah, that's the good stuff. And Tiefenthalering getting a really early look. Really nice job on the coaching staff getting the bodies in early. Yeah, I think that's the key to the game, you know, because these Sabres, they're not going to give up. They're, they're just going to play you know, nip and tuck. Their bench is deep, and so I'm glad that we're getting some warm-ups here for everybody. Yeah, very good point, because there's one of their bench guys right there, number six, Kyle Long, 6'3", guard, Western Oregon University. Yeah, there's a whole lot of shooter shirts on that bench too, Gary. So, yeah, uh, yeah very astute observation. Paul Hafford working that baseline and off the glass. Hafford playing free. Gary, what a year this guy is having, and it's so good to have him here. Oh, better be a volcano than a slam, I'll tell you that. <laughs> a slam. <laughs> a what? slam. A slam. A slam. The Bellingham slam. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 24-13 Volcanoes. Tarver's going into the game, going back in. And uh, let's see, spelling Hafford. So once again, they're doing a really nice rotation, uh, getting everyone some looks. So that's good stuff. Uh, Carlisle hasn't been in yet. The Rocket hasn't been in yet. Carlisle will be interesting, Gary, because there's been, depending on who you talk to, the coaches or the player himself, he's off two weeks. No, he's playing tonight. What time did you talk to him last night? What time? So I think he is going to get a run tonight. He seems pretty confident. Yeah, he's, he's feeling, you know, good. And not great, but he's feeling good. And 26-13 after that layup right there, Volcanoes. So they're really bringing it right now in the first quarter. That was a nice dump off, but number 40 wasn't expecting it. Christopher White from Western Oregon University. And there's Andre for three. You yeah. betcha. They're doing what we want them to do, Maverick. I love this. Well, this is Chris. 12-21 yeah. from the field. And uh, they are even in the rebounding battle, which is great considering they have those two horses. But the big number, 11 assists to five. Yeah, that, they're sharing that's, the ball. Yep, sharing the ball. 14 already for uh, Andre. That's great. Oh my goodness! In one quarter? One quarter. We're not even done with the quarter yet. Wow. Burton with the put in. No. Tiefenthaler down, fighting through the double team there. It's like I want this out of here. And they did a jump ball. Coach Navarro is not real happy about it. I know Tiefenthaler <laughs> had to go to like one arm, Gary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jo Joe Burton, he, he's not going to give up on nothing, man. No, he's not. <laughs> No, he's not. Tiefen Thaler still had his hands up. Like, come on. Is there a whistle here? Is it going to happen? But remember, Gary, if you're waiting for an official, that's not yeah, a good don't thing. Don't wait. No, no. Just, just from our, our hundreds of games from watching the idea. <laughs> We're so experienced. All right, so in the corner there with the three. Not good for long. All right, Murray up ahead. He's got some numbers. But he's going to take it himself. Yeah. Love that football move. Yeah, bank is open coming into the weekend for Andre Murray. He can deposit any time he wants. The leaner there for Taylor. So that stops the Volcano run, Gary. But boy, 31 to 15. Yeah. But no lead is safe in this league. But no. what a fantastic start for Vancouver. Tiefenthaler's got the mismatch. Real nice move. But uh, the shot reeled off his hand just a little bit. So good looks though. Inside yep. outside play, Gary. The break is looking real nice. There's long for three. No good. Keep with all our boards. Yeah. They're doing everything. Like There's, oh, a <laughs> little surprise there. <laughs> Steal for the big fella. Wow, and look at that. A little flip behind the back. Oh, he's got some flash to him, Gary. He really does. And there's a three-pointer for number 30. Three. Yeah, count that yeah. up. That's Anthony Sanchez, 6'3 guard, George Fox. Had a real good game here last time, too. Helped when they were made a big run on us in the third quarter before the Volcanoes uh, steadied the ship that last time they were here. Yeah. Uh, and there's Murray, bounce pass to Kevin West. Oh, oh. should have been. Good effort. Yeah. In and out, unfortunately. Oh, offensive foul. Offensive foul, or is it? Technical foul. Oh, a technical. On. Oh, missed that part. What, what happened there? Um, I'm not too sure, Gary. See if you can hear something. Ask uh, referee Anthony Gonzalez. David Gonzalez, excuse me. You didn't do it, Gary. I'm not happy. <laughs> All right, so Murray does hit the technical. And uh, the Sabres get the ball back. So we'll, we'll take that gift point. Yep. 
It's 32-18, Volcanoes. Just under 42 seconds left in the opening quarter. And Taylor bringing it up there, number five. And he's looking down low. Oh, oh. nice pass. Up. Before the, was that before the basket? Yeah, it sure was. Yeah. It was on the pass. I think it was on T. Yeah, and I think you're right. Which was a real nice foul there because that led to two points. So uh, T even Fowler saved it. Uh, saved it. Saved it. <laughs> that whole T thing, Gary. Yeah, 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 I know. Got me going. <laughs> All right. So, oh, good penetration oh. there. I think Murray was surprised by that one. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he would expected that at all. I think he was surprised. So there we go, foul is on the play. Foul on Murray. And uh, going to the line is number six, Kyle Long. Averaging 16 points a game and almost five assists. So he can get in here and, and fit right in the rotation. Kind of reminded me of what Mike Taylor was doing last time they were here. Yes, yeah. And this one bounces in. Caffer coming back in for West, so West got a little bit of run. He didn't get a chance to kind of show off what he was doing, but he did get two assists and a rebound, so. Yeah, that, that, that helps out. You know, you don't have to always score to, to be a contributor. That's very true. Yeah, but there's a lot of scores on the Volcanoes, and. They need some other roles to build, and they can do that. So 32-20, 16 seconds and counting to end the quarter. Josh Tarver calling a play, calling the offense. Shot clock is following the game clock. And that's J.R. Moore covered by Burton. Over to Murray, six seconds and counting. Taylor with the defense, but Murray got some daylight. Yep. Nice screen there by Murray. Ah. Nice and a little left-handed scoop. It was only 77 degrees out today, but the ice cream was coming. Fair to see Andre Murray on that one. So, yes, we're going to go take a break and uh, think about how great ice cream tastes. So, after a quarter, it is your Vancouver Volcanoes 34. The Salem Sabres 20 will be back soon on FETV Channel 11. Lots of fun happening at the O'Connell Sports Center on a Friday night. It was a beautiful day outside. It's a great night of basketball inside. Fun for the family. Bring your kids on down. And if you haven't, we don't like you anymore. It's Vancouver Volcano <laughs> Basketball, IBL on FETV, Channel 11. Mike Koreski with you this evening. Good evening to the Couve and surrounding areas. And with me, Gary Akiyama, the jelly to the peanut butter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It just, it's a great, yeah. How many times do I compliment you a game, Gary? Yeah, oh, so many times I came and, you know, How many? count them. Oh. Where, where, where else can you get this many compliments, Gary? Uh, nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so the coaching staff, coaches Joe Navarro, Jeff Christensen, liking what they see so far. 34 20 volcanoes up over the Salem Sabres, and the three from Hafford is out. Carlisle there was trying to climb the mountain known as Joe Burton. So Mount Burton, he was trying to climb, <laughs> and it didn't happen. Coaching staff for Salem, Gary, uh, Joe Becerra, Willie Freeman. Talk to me about these guys and, and what Salem needs to do to get back in it. Well, what Salem needs to do to get back in it is obviously they, they need to score more points, but the way they need to score more points is, is um, you know, just penetrating inside. Uh, you know, they're taller than us, and they're not taking advantage of that as much. And we're doing a great job, you know, just just going inside. Actually, with Andre Murray penetrating, he's really penetrating. So they need to, they need to stop our guards, and they're not doing that. I think so too. Yeah, it hasn't. Their size has kind of been negated by the volcano's ability to get into the paint and their quickness. Yes, and uh, so far the volcanoes are finishing. As good as I've seen them in, in three, four years. Oh, yeah. They, they've done real good. 15 of 27 right now from three-point land, three of nine, and you know, only one opportunity at the free throw line. They made that. And look at the Andre already, 19 points, Maverick. And uh, 11 assists for the Volcanoes as a team to five for Salem. So, yeah, Andre's been the... Uh, been the benefactor of many a look from his fellow Volcano teammates. Eight of 10 from the field. And like you said, the 19 to go with four assists too. So yes, and you were you had your checklist tonight for the Volcanoes, what to do to win. 
just concentrate yeah. on maybe one of those uh, one of those categories. We want to save it for a little later. Okay, too, sure. You know? Well, let's pe the number three one I had was penetrate inside toward the basket. We need to have Andre Murray and Josh Tarver penetrate on these guys, and voila, Maverick, they're doing exactly that. So that portion of G's Keys brought to you by Akiyama Financial. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, you got this all dialed in, don't you, Mav? Oh, I do. And speaking of dialed in, it's Andre Murray. He had that jump step, Gary. He had that jump step uh, crossover, and he banked it in once again. I think he's uh, he had a talk with the backboard before tonight's contest. I believe he did. He's looking really good. I mean, you know, he was injured a few weeks ago, but, man, he's looking good, Maverick. Well, remember, he had some problems in his foot that spread up to his calf, that spread up to his knee, but it looks like a couple of weeks off, and... It's done wonders. Yeah. Yeah. Last week he, he looked good, but tonight he looks it, really crisp. Really good, yeah. Yeah. Lots of things are falling. So Jake Carlisle's into the game, and uh, J.R. Moore takes a seat. So on the floor for the Volcanoes, Carlisle, Tarver, Tapscott, Murray, and Hafford. And then on the floor for the Sabres, it is Taylor. It is number 40, Christoph White. It is number 24, Daniel Dean, number six, Kyle Long. And rounding out the starters is number five, Mike Taylor. I think that might be a little bit tender for Jake. Yes, uh, Jake Carlisle, really bad groin pull a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, like I said, we, have, we had differing information <laughs> from what was going to be sitting for two weeks, all of a sudden changed to, I'm suiting up tonight and playing. <laughs> It's the Ibble, folks. It is the Ibble. So there we go, Murray uh, down there on Taylor. So Salem, I think it kind of spread to the offense, too, because, um, see, there's some rebounds and whatnot. But right, right. Great D by Carlisle, even though he was uh, fouled him on the play. Very nice aggressiveness there. And see, that's the thing. I think the Volcano big men, because there's some reinforcements now with Tiefenthaler and Carlisle seems to be reasonably healthy, that uh, they've got like four guys they can rotate in there now on the pivot. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a real good situation to be in. You got Teef, you got uh, Carlisle, uh, e even, you know, Gio, of course, and, and J.R. Moore. So, right. you know, I mean, gee, our, our bench, like I always say this every year, but our bench is good enough to start on most other IBL teams. Well, and that was the thing when Daniel Dean was with the Volcanoes. I mean, he, uh, you can see how talented he is, but with all the big men there, and uh, all of the other three were there, not Tiefenthaler, of course, because he just rejoined, but the other three were there, so it was hard to find minutes. It was, it and was. He, yeah, but he came to Salem. He had already been with Salem, too, through the ABA season right. when they actually won the ABA championship versus the Kitsap Admirals. And uh, a week or two later was the IBL season. Dean thought he would come up the I-5 uh, corridor here to us, but a uh, better situation for him back in Salem, and he's just doing fantastic. Player of the week last week for the IBL. Yeah, he'll, he'll be a great contributor uh, to, not only to the Sabres in regular season, but come playoff time, you, you just got to watch out. Oh, definitely. There's uh, a wonderful pass there from Taylor over to Christopher White. Uh, Taylor, great-looking ball player, Gary. Yeah, it just seems to be coming into his own. Yeah, I, I think he's he's probably one of the ones that, you know, was kind of um, the unknown uh, factor for the Sabres, and, and he's proven himself so far this season. And there's Tapscott with the leaner, not quite. Dean corrals the rebound, and that's number 30 with the layup to attempt no good oh. for Anthony Sanchez. And a jump ball on the play. And another sub for the Volcanoes, Kevin West. Looks like he's going to get another shot at it here after the jump ball, that is. <laughs> so, yes, Gary, the IBL, I really thought when the season began it was Volcanoes and Slam, but here we go. I mean, here's the Sabres, Portland Chinooks, tough as always. Yeah, Portland is tough as always. They've had that losing streak, though, when they've been losing just the, by the closest of games and that's what's really hurt them in the standings right now. So I, I had the Sabres as, as a dark horse contender, but you want to really go a surprise team that may shake things up and upset some teams and shake the standings for the playoffs, it could be the Nippon Tornadoes. And no one's talking about that. If they get their key players over here, th that's what, what could happen, Maverick. Well, that's true. You brought up to me that the uh, Tornadoes only lost to the Sabres team by 12 last yeah, weekend. Right. 
And that was the day after they had our the game against us. They went to the next day to Salem and really hung with them. So you're totally right if they can get some people back at Dark Horse. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, the Chinooks, they're in Texas to play tomorrow and Sunday against the Lone Star Strikers. So that should be pretty interesting because Lone Star has a lot of height. And uh, they gave Portland a tough game on the start of their road trip here a couple weekends ago. And, and that could be a pivotal road trip for the Chinooks as well. Uh, they're going to have to come out of there with, with two wins to get back into this playoff race with a, with a better standing. Yes, the playoff format this year, Gary, is uh, streamlined a little bit. Top four teams going in. So one through four is kind of like settled unless the tornadoes make some noise. But then it's that all-important positioning. And the coaching staff here, the Volcanoes, they know that. Yeah, they know that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, in talking with Joe earlier this week, you know, they're 8-3. and three. I think he's fairly satisfied with where, where they are. There were a, a game or two there they, they should have won, he thought, but it was early in the season. So I think he's, you know, uh, just grooming them for the second half. Well, and they're looking really good at home, Gary, like we've talked about. But... About the past five years, they've always looked good at home. Right. But the talent they have added with uh, Tapscott and Geo Bain and Hafford and then Mike Ward before he went down was just a, a, such an injection of, of youth and younger players that I haven't seen before. And there's a nice pass from Hafford over to Tarver, but the layup didn't happen. And then a couple players uh, may be joining the Volcanoes as well, Maverick. Uh, I think you have some info on that. Yes, definitely. So Jeremiah Dominguez, four years with the Portland Chinooks, coming to Vancouver this weekend. On Sunday, he will make his debut for the Volcanoes. Another and Portland State product. Exactly. And Andre Murray's backcourt running mate for a couple seasons right. uh, when they made two consecutive NCAA tourney appearances. So Dominguez, his best season was his first one with Portland in 2009, over 21 points a game over eight assists a game. He had a couple of other years, 2010 and 11, with Portland with five and seven games. And there's Tarver getting it yep. done. Penetrating like Josh. we want him to. And then last year was Salem, actually. He had uh, 10 games started, 15 games played, and over 18 points a game. So we're really happy to have him back starting, this uh, starting in two days. And okay. then it will be Garrett Sim, University of Oregon product. And uh, he is career first in games played, 136 consecutive for the Ducks. So basically from freshman year on, he was playing, Gary. Uh, eighth all-time for career three-pointers made, ninth in career free throw percentage, tied for 10th all-time for career steals. Yeah. And the 29th player all-time leading scorer over 1,000 points. So that'll be in another week or so. He's uh, resting from his uh, season in Germany. They went deep in the playoffs. So he needed a little bit of time to re refresh, but he knows assistant coach Jeff Christensen played for him in high school at Sunset. We're just keeping get better and better, Maverick. Well, and with Mike Ward gone and, and possibly for the rest of the season, they've got to shore up the point guard position a little bit because you have Tarver, and then after that you have Andre Murray. And as, as tempting as it is to leave Murray to do that, that's not his true strength right yeah it really isn't and you don't want to force someone to go into a position that they're that they really not set up to be i mean he could like you said but it's a lot better if you have a real true point guard totally agree and uh the coaching staff they've been trying to do the two point guard thing uh where it's uh, the, the talent level is very even. They've been trying that for four years now, and so they'll keep it coming. They'll keep going at it with that. And uh, so it'll be great to get Simon Dominguez in there to mix them up with Tarver. So all of a sudden, a bunch of point guards. Yep, that, that's, yeah, you, you, you know, it's kind of like pitchers in baseball. I mean, you, you can't have enough of them, really. Yeah, and yeah, because any day you can turn an ankle, you can pop something, uh, life, life happens. You know, right. people in the right. IBL, they still have jobs to do families to support and commitments to keep so it doesn't always work with the schedule sometimes and once again it's the evil <laughs> so you never know so I, I take those three point guards and we'll see if they can be happy right and, you know a, a player that's missing that was on the volcanoes I thought he joined the Sabres but I've seen one on the roster Do you know what happened to Antoine Williams well I thought he was with them and um, I thought Navarro was saying the only game well, he, he played for them was against us. Actually, he is on the roster, That's Maverick, so thinking. maybe other things just, going just on. Just not I don't here know. this evening. Yeah, yeah, it could be. We were we wanted to see him, and we wish him the best. 
Absolutely. He was uh, one of our point guards on the championship run. Yeah. So there you have it. And that was a, a different year because it started out with Antoine Williams. And uh, then we had Mac Hobson come in, an experiment that didn't quite work out right. after a couple weeks. And, and Tarver was like the, he was the one, that one acquisition that really took it over the top. Yeah. And uh, you can just see great personality, Gary, fun guy to have around. And like I said, that vision, he gets everyone working in it. And he's just, he just has great vision in court sense, Josh Tarver. Well, it's about team chemistry. And I, I think, you know, uh, Navarro and Christensen have it figured out now. And that's the thing, too. I, I mean, it boils down to, Gary, a lot of these guys play for the Volcanoes for different reasons. Tarver, he likes the ball. He loves the game right. of basketball. And to see that passion there, he's directing the traffic. Yep. And it's, it's just great to see multiple players all, you know, who like the game that much, who just love it. And there's Carlisle for that three-pointer. And Jake wasn't going to take that at first, Gary, but they laid <laughs> off him. <laughs> he's not used to shooting that anymore. No, no. He hes hesitated just a slight second there. Yeah, he did. He didn't listen to your advice, that's for sure. <laughs> so number one into the game for the Sabres, that's Wyatt Graziano, 6'7 forward, Northwest Christian. Flips over to Taylor. Taylor flips to Dean, oh. beats the shot clock. Barely beat the clock. Yeah, it seems to me, Gary, that they start, um, the Volcanoes start trying to pull away and Salem hangs around. This is very reminiscent of two weeks ago when they were here. Salem right. got it down to six points, if you remember, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that was a barn burner, too. West, no good with the three-pointer. Taps got rebounds. Over to Josh Tarver. No. Geo. Oh, nice. And one. Good to get him back out there, Gary. Good to get him back out there. He's not really like the offensive force that you would think a guy his size, but you know, you put him in there and he just just messes it up for the opposition. <laughs> yeah. Change your game plan, plan B. Right. He just you know, wingspan and and his instinct on shot blocks and uh, all time leader in IBL leader in shot blocking. As a matter he, of yeah, fact. he is. Good point. Yeah, like two and a half a game, I think it is. So 49-33 in favor of the Volcanoes, 432 left in this opening half. So that's Mike Taylor for a three, no. Burton with the rebound, double team. He flips it over to Graziano. Ah, oh, the ball's picked off by Andre. He's got Tarver ahead of him. He shares it to him. Oh, no good, but Gio. Oh, he crashed, but he got called for it. Wow, that was, I don't know if that was offensive or not. That was yeah, a close one. Crazy stuff, but, you know, you can't fault him for the aggressiveness and the heads up on that following the play. Yeah, look good, though. Look good. Big man 101. <laughs> Always follow the play. And so you have Feast bringing it up over to Taylor for the Sabres. Down by 16. Want to get something going. Oh, boy. And they do for the moment. Yeah, three-pointer by Feast. 8.3 points a game from Oregon State. Yeah, he's surprising me. He's got four ribbies you know, for a little guard, man. He's just all over the place. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty heady. Once we, once we talked about we like that depth Salem's putting together. Right. Three-pointers out for Tapscott. Dean rebounds. Oh, nice. Oh, the nice. Off by Tapscott. Oh, yes. The old, he must have learned that from Pipster. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The hang around steal. <laughs> what you doing? Just hanging around. <laughs> And so we're looking here. Taps got still pretty happy about that play. No, he should be. I mean, yeah. that was a good heads up play. Yeah, when you make the heads up play and you get something sneaky going on, I guess yeah. you're going to be smiling. Yeah, you get rewarded. Yeah, there you go. Sneakiness is rewarded. So Taylor went to his knees, still got it to Dean, who gets it out to Graziano for three. No. Taylor pulls that down. Yeah, Salem needs to hit the threes, Gary. Yeah. They've got to get their three ball going a bit to. Open it up for Burton doing some of this action here. Yeah. Four of 14 is not going to do it for him. I agree with you. Yeah, they, they're they really dependent on there. And Corey Largent not here tonight. You, you know, wow, that's who I'm missing. Oh, Corey Largent, yeah, 24.1 points a game, four rebounds, 2.6 assists. Woo, lucked out there. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't know uh, what the reasoning is. Just couldn't make the road trip here. The thing is, like I've talked about, Gary, sometimes is that you need three guys. It's a three-legged stool. It, it is. In an it IBL is. team, in an IBL game. Each game, it's a three-legged stool. You need a big three. 
to give you the points, the, pr the, the production of the points, the double figures, almost 20 apiece, and some rebounds and assists. And right now you're looking at Salem, and uh, Burton's at the line there. He only has two points on that uh, skyhook action a little bit earlier. But uh, Taylor has seven, and then you have a bunch of guys. Dean has five and Sanchez six. That three-legged stool is not quite as good as Vancouver's because you have 21 for Murray, but then a trio, guys, with seven points. Tarver, Tapscott, Happer. Boy, hey, lucky sevens, rolling sevens. Yeah, to go with 21. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, heads up there. All right, so Burden after hitting it, 51-37. Three minutes to go in the first half. They're working the ball around, everyone touching it, good stuff. Tapscott flips over to Tarver. Tarver flips to Murray. Murray sees a break in the, in the daylight there. Not quite, though. And here comes Salem. And Graziano gets the angle, and he is fouled. And you credit Mike Taylor with that because he drove into the teeth of the defense one on four, <laughs> but Graziano was cutting just in time. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, pretty impressive. There. I thought he penetrated too deep, but uh, something tells me he knew Graziano was coming or something like that. So. And he's kind of nodding up there at the half court to feast. So yeah, so yeah, they they must have had that set yeah, up. Yeah, we knew that was coming. <laughs> so Graziano hits the first one to close the gap, 51-38, and he hands it again. So any any production you're getting off the bench, Gary, for the um, Sabers tonight, especially with no Corey Largent, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's a big void. Uh, who, you know, 24 points. You kind of you have a deficit going into the game, so, so they're gonna, someone's going to have to step up. And like you say, the three-legged stool, three people are going to have to step up. Oh yeah, yeah, you need that. Kind of reminds me of when we would have those uh, knockdown dragouts with Olympia. Right, right. When it was it was Mike Ward and uh, Nate Minifee and um, oh, who was their third guy? They had a third oh. guy. But uh, anywho, we'll think of that. But Graziano cans a three, so Wyatt giving him some production. Giving him production, and he did that a couple weeks ago too. Got a couple threes down, so. Sabers quietly coming back. Yeah, don't leave him alone. Nice, nice. Andre says, what comeback? What comeback? 54-42, Volcanoes under two minutes to go in the first half. So Ward is bringing it up, or I mean Taylor's bringing it up for Salem. Once again, guard the three line, Gary. Yep. Guard the three. See Feast. He wants that three. Not quite. He did a great job using the screen by Burton, though, he even did. though it was in and Burton for Burton. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was just standing there. He was like a double screen. Right. It's nice to have that uh, have that frame, isn't it? So Teef and Thaw are coming in. They're going to let Jake sit out this last part of the first half. So good effort from Carlisle. Uh, just one rebound to go. 0 for 1 from the field, but... He can fill in the space, and he always is productive. Yeah, he does so much out there that, you know, that you just don't realize. Yeah, it's not in the stat sheet. Tiefenthaler, no good on his three-point attempt. He'll get a few down. Yep. He's just got to get a few up there first. So, Dean Ooh, going to the hole. bump there. Yeah. Boy, Dean is deceptively quick, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is real quick for a big guy. I'll tell you, that guy's got a motor. He's got a motor, Gary, because it does not matter if it's an 18-point <laughs> deficit or if it's an 18-point lead. That guy is just, uh, he throws he fifth going. gear. I haven't seen many players who do that. Yeah, but then in overdrive. Yeah, he doesn't really get too emotional either. No. He, he just He's just going to keep at you. <laughs> Big credit to him. Oh, have you ever seen that, Maverick? <laughs> oh, every, every, every so often. <laughs> that means they get the point, right? <laughs> No, not at all, but it looked really funny. Yeah. Top plays, ESPN, right? Yeah, if, if there is a weak, <laughs> weakness with Daniel Dean, you know, like he, he's one for four from the free throw line. Now he makes that, but, but you know, that's one thing that, that he could improve on. Well, and I'm sure that'll be part of the game he'll be working on. I mean, especially if he wants to continue and make a career out of it. He has that work ethic. He will improve it, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Tapscott rebounds it. Uh, two Sabres knocked it out, but it looks like it came off of Tapscott. I think it hit his foot there. Yeah, Feast and Graziano knocked it off him. So here we go. Salem can get this thing into single digits by the end of the half, which would be quite a coup for them. Yes. Considering it was up to 16, 17 points yeah, earlier. it was. And there we go. Taylor flips. Oh, Burton nice flips move. to Taylor. Wow. Oh, those, oh boy. Nice give and go. Nice yep. give and go. Burton on the recipient of that. 
Oh, and there's first and 10, Andre Murray. Yeah, yeah, there's that tuck. There's that football move. 56-45, 33 seconds to go. So, yeah, Salem had a really nice look there, and once again, Murray just erased it. So Taylor and Murray's Ooh, face. Whoa. And there's three. I, I'm thinking Murray's going to take this next shot. What do you think? Yeah, I know he wants it. You feel, but Tap Scott, is he going to do it? He's, he's working the picket line. Oh, nice move. Very nice. Chehalis showing it off tonight. Another thing, Gary, he seems to be a little more at the three line, uh, doing some fakes and coming into the middle, too. Yeah. Haven't, haven't seen that quite as much. He's been doing a lot of uh, some post-up work earlier this season and a lot of crashing the boards and just kind of staying with the play. Yeah, he's a lot like a bench. He's an all-around player, I'm telling you. Yeah. Whatever it takes to win. Yeah, he can do a lot of things. Uh, with Salem, he held a lot of roles for them. With right. Vancouver, he's really done such a nice job of just fitting in, as, uh, as Hafford has as well. 59-48, it's five seconds to go. Taylor's looking for something. He goes to Daniel Dean for the three. Plenty of time. Oh, right at the buzzer, Maverick. Counted, and they gave him three. Nice stuff from Daniel Dean. Wow. A great half of uh, basketball. Uh, one of the best halves I've seen all year from both sides of the ball. Really crisp ball handling and shooting. 20 of 37 for the Volcanoes, 12 of 39 for the Sabres. So we'll talk about this a little more when we come back, when we get the, the third quarter started. But right now it's time for a break. You guys go get your snacks and your beverages. We're going to do the same. So halftime. Vancouver Volcanoes 59, Salem Sabres 51. And welcome back. The O'Connell Sports Center on the campus of Clark College, the site of tonight's IBL contest between the visiting Salem Sabres and your hometown Vancouver Volcanoes. Still trying to get that uh, perfect record going. Trying to keep that perfect home court record. Mike Koreski with you this evening. Good evening. Happy TV Channel 11 is where you're watching us. Or maybe YouTube. We're all over the place, Gary Akiyama. <laughs> so what have you been seeing after this first half? We talked about how great a half of basketball it was for both squads. Why is it that so? You know, I think it's, it's been a great basketball game because both teams have been you know, playing their game, playing their tempo, and, and it didn't start that way, but, you know, it's been going back and forth. But the big key why we're ahead by only eight points, even though it is eight points, uh, would be the assist. Uh, we have 18 assists compared to their 12. So if you look at free throws or maybe a field goal every now and then to fit into that, that would make the difference of the eight-point lead. Yes, you said it all right there. So uh, a very good style of play, very wide open. What the IBL is known for, lots of fast breaks and wide open three-point looks. Right, and I think we're going to see the same thing second half. What we have to do is, is like on those uh, G's keys or that I made earlier in the game, let's follow those again, Mavericks, because those are going to be the keys really for them to win this game. And speaking of keys, why don't you give me another one of those? G's keys brought to you by Akiyama Financial. <laughs> Well, another one's going to have to be we have to uh, good picks and screens so we can make the threes or allow Josh Tarver or Andre Murray to penetrate that middle. Four of ten for Vancouver from the three so far. Four of 14 for Salem from the three. And there's an alley-oop to Gio Bain. Oh. But Gio lost it on the uh, on the come up there. Yeah. So, But a, a very good pass. I, it might have been called right out of the timeout what they were going to go to. And there's a three-pointer right there for number 33, Scott Starkey. So only his second basket of the night, but boy, it was a big one to get it started. Yeah. Cut that down to single digits now. 59-54, Volcanoes, 11.25 left in the third quarter. And there is Paul Hafford. Almost. Oh. Starkey was in his face. He was looking for a foul, but Starkey goes ahead and picks up the loose, the loose ball and puts it in. So Salem has closed the gap, Gary. It was eight to start the quarter and in a matter of minutes. Two minutes, it's down to three. Yeah, we just got to get the momentum back here really quick. And foul on the play there. And Hafford will be shooting two for Vancouver. Yeah, this will be Paul's first, uh, actually, attempt at the charity line this game. 
Nice. A nice start. <laughs> yeah, that's surprising. He's usually getting to that line, but he's only had seven attempts. One of five from the three this evening so far. Okay, there he goes. Great. For the second all-time IBL leading scorer. And so Feast brings it up over there to Starkey. Happer was on the D, but Starkey got past it. In the corner, Mike Taylor. Not quite. Gio Bain fights over Daniel Dean for the rebound. Here comes Vancouver. Oh, nice. And that is Paul uh, oh. Hafford. Well, now we'll see him again, <laughs> Maverick. Yeah, exactly. Now you see me, now you don't. There he is again. Well, and that's what we need. That's what we need to do. All right, so Hafford is going to go to the line. And first shot is nice. good. Three of three. Yes. And here's the next one. Four of four. Oh, four of nice four. golf talk, man. Yeah. <laughs> I do what I do. Well, plus two, I think it was Hafford. It's, he's getting to that line now. We talked about how he had it the whole time, and here he goes. So Taylor was looking for Feast off that screen, but no. Daniel Whoa. Dean. Oh, Daniel Dean. 63-58. Ah. Volcanoes. A little over 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. And Tarver going behind the Bain screen a couple of times. Oh, almost said the hello there to his teammate. Yeah, Dean, Dean got his hand on it. Now there's a loose ball. Taps got controls to Murray. Little shuffle shot, no, to beat the, he beat the clock, nice, but then nice. Gio cleaned it up, so good stuff for Gio. In the first half there, uh, you're looking at Gio Bain's numbers, two or three from the field for five points and four rebounds. And there's Burton in the corner, Mike Taylor. There was a block, and Taps got controls. Over to Murray. And not quite. Should be a foul there. Yeah. There you go. Okay, foul on the play. Now all and of a sudden, Maverick, we're just going to the charity line here. Yeah, it's been a, a weird quarter so far yeah. because Salem is getting a lot of wide open looks and they're doing a lot of creating and whatnot. And Vancouver seems to be going into the paint trying to get the physical thing going. Right. Whereas the first half, it was just kind of both sides doing the same thing. Vancouver's kind of shifted the gears on their game plan. Time for that second three throw as it's quiet in this gym. Yeah. Hey, we're doing great. We're actually with him and uh, Hafford. We're six of six this half so far. Very this, nice. This quarter, actually. Very nice. Well, and only four or five in the first half from the line, so I'll bet you the coaching staff, Navarro and Christensen, were like, we have to get to the line here. Yeah, yeah. We've got to do that. And Tap Scott, there's a foul there, but they didn't call it. Oh, nice block there by <laughs> Nice Dean. block by Dean. Burton collects. Oh, Murray picks it off. Is he going to cash it in? Nope, but Gio will. Oh, uh, foul. Foul on the play. Here we go at the free throw line again, Maverick. Yeah, there's a really nice crash going on there for Vancouver there on the free throws. Yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty much doing a lot better job, I thought, than we would containing, you know, Daniel and Joe there on, on our offensive boards. And uh, coaching staff for Salem looking there, Gary. They're a little concerned. Yeah, they're looking a little sour. But uh, they're staying in the game so far. But nice. I think all of a sudden, though, it's been like the last four times down the floor, Vancouver's went to the line. So maybe that's what they're adjusting to. Yeah. Geo really concentrating there. We are eight of eight this quarter, Maverick, on free throws. That's great. That's great. And the lead is up to 69 to 58 now. Salem had it down to three, but thanks to some trips to the charity stripe, Vancouver is putting that lead back up into double digits. Taylor with the three, though. Yep, yep. He'll counteract that. Yeah, he's not going anywhere, is no, he? He's point. not going anywhere. All right, so Murray flips across court to Hafford. Pass Starkey. Nice dish to tap, Scott. Oh! Geo with the cleanup, not quite. Hafford with the cleanup, not quite. And Dean pulls it up to Starkey. And pulls across court to Feast. 
Boy, Gary, what a, what a tale of two halves. <laughs> a tale of two halves. Yep. All of a sudden, the pace really changed. Yeah, yeah, it has. Turnover on the plate. Vancouver maintains possession or regains possession. And that's Murray looking oh, look to do his thing. Tucking that football and then, yeah, he's fouled. Yeah, he's taking that back to the football days, isn't he? It's almost like he's camouflaging that basketball, isn't it, Maverick? Uh, yeah, it sure is. Okay, so what is Murray doing? Okay, looks like he's trying to get some things done there as he points to the scoreboard. Might be a time issue that he was looking at. All right, Murray's going to shoot two. So 69-61 Volcanoes, 8.09 left in the third quarter. And I will, I will just join the spirit of the golf. There you go. That's what I will I've, I've do. never heard it so quietly in the theater before. I know. That's pretty crazy <laughs> stuff. That's pretty crazy. And so Murray gets the So next Maverick, goal. we're 10 of 10 this quarter on the free throw line. That's fantastic. And that is huge right now. It, it seems to be, that seems to be where the source of scoring has came from. It Not is. one particular player, but from a particular mindset. Right, right. And let's see how Salem reacts to it. Good defense by Tapscott coming out on Taylor. But there's Feast for a three. Not quite, but he does corral his rebound. And good D by Hafford out on Dean at the three line. But Hafford, oh, boy, Daniel is quick, isn't yeah, he? He takes Jeez. it in. He takes it in. And there we go, Tarver. All right, and Hafford. He's in. Mm. Not quite. You know, Paul's, right. Paul's looking for that foul, and you just can't depend on the refs to call that foul. Yeah. That's very, and it's very right. You know, That's very right, he's Gary. He's got to play it through. Yeah, yeah, he's going to have to play it through. But if anyone knows how to do that, it's him. Tarver played it through, though. Nice penetration by Josh. Yeah, Tarver played it through. So first half, Tarver's number, seven points and eight assists. Very nice. Very nice. And no good for Taylor. Gio gets it back, and there goes Murray. One man to beat, and he does. <laughs> wow. They're penetrating. Wow. He's looking real good so far. All right, Dean over to Taylor. And there's a three-pointer. Not quite. All right, so Kyle Long comes in there. There was chance to air ball. So yeah, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Long comes in, Feast goes out. So one three-point shooter for another. We'll see what happens. But Long averaging 16 a game, so you know he can ring it up. Yeah. Hafford for a three off the screen. Beautiful look, nope. but not quite. Been a little off for Hafford. Kind yeah, of his yeah. first game since the Canos. That yeah. It's just been a little off for him. Because there's been times he said it's kind of off, but it didn't right, look like that. Right. <laughs> so Geo Bain rebounds, and there's Murray. He's going to split it. Oh, he oh, goes nice, to tap. Oh, nice. Oh, nice reverse. Yeah, very nice teamwork. Very nice teamwork. And there's that jumper from Starkey. No, here comes Hafford. White shirts filling the lanes. The ball is loose, and it goes to Salem. And so, a timeout on the floor. It's time to talk. It's time for the teams to talk. And while that's going on, we will go to break. So, the Volcano 77, the Sabres 63 on FVTV Channel 11. And back at you, FETV Channel 11, Clark College, the O'Connell Sports Center. It's the site of tonight's IBL contest, the Salem Sabres, the Vancouver Volcanoes. Good stuff tonight, 77-63 Volcanoes. Gary Akiyama, it's been a weird third quarter because at halftime it was 59-51. The Sabres got it down to three right off the bat, 
but the Volcanoes have used a weird weapon to get the lead back. Right, yeah, 18 to 12 uh, were ahead of them, but of those 18 points, Maverick, we're 10 for 10 from the charity line, so 10 of our 18 points are from the free throw line. And that shows aggressiveness, pure and simple. Aggressiveness, that's how that looks. And when you have that going, Gary, eventually it will lead to some some open looks spread the floor because the defense will have to sag in on you so it's uh when you're the aggressor and you're making keeping them on their heels it's very important because it opens up all the other options absolutely uh, the sabers are going to have to play true to us instead of vice versa so you're, you're right maverick it makes a big difference so daniel dean with the jumper no good bain with the rebound up ahead to murray murray's trying to beat long and dean and he does get fouled on the play. Yeah, it seems like uh, yeah, Daniel had held on to that one. Andre's had a great third quarter, great game for the Volcanoes. And uh, the aggressiveness, haven't seen that from him for a while because he's been hurt, of course, and last week was just getting his legs out from under him. Well, he, yeah, he, he's showing everything tonight, and, and that's great to have him get warmed up here and, and just really hitting his stride. Getting his sea legs, so to speak. Right. It's the first one. <laughs> and Murray's getting ready here for the next one. And the crowd quiets once again. Yeah, it's just been a, just a different quarter. Yeah, it's been very strange. Oh. Well, that's our first miss, so 11 of 12, not a bad run there. Well, yeah, especially with five minutes to go in the third quarter before when went south, so that's not a bad thing at all. So Mike Taylor over to Starkey for three. He's usually not shooting those. The last couple trips down, um, Gary, Salem's just had a couple of weird looks. Oh, that <laughs> All right, the ball was up, though, and Joe Burton recovers. He's been real quiet, too, Gary, Joe yeah, Burton. Yeah, has. yeah. A lot of the players have been uh, pretty quiet. Except for that yeah, except one. Except Daniel Dean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's never quiet. Even when the ball isn't falling, he finds other ways to, to fill that stat sheet. And Tarver there to tap Scott. Dean laying off him over to Murray, but Taylor's up on him. So let's see what Andre wants to do. Nice hesitation move. Oh, what do they call it, travel? Offensive foul oh. on Tarver. Oh, they call oh, traveling travel. on Andre. Okay. okay, traveling on the step back. Kind of an array of thoughts go through your head when that happens, yeah, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and one. And wow, travel. What is it? it? Takes us a bit of time to figure it out, but we do, and we do it for you folks. FETV Channel 11. And Mike Taylor there. Tarver's out on him. They don't want him to get too hot either. Very good sag defense. The Volcanoes have had a really nice zone going, Gary. Yeah, they do. Yeah, good defense. And Whoa. Burton. Oh. That almost balanced right on the beam there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Big Jake coming in there, Maverick. Yeah, first run of the second half for Jake Carlisle. So we'll see what we get. In the first half, he got a little bit of time testing out that, uh, that groin pole. And like we said, he did okay. He looked pretty good running up and down the floor. He played 10 minutes, so nice see what move by this time. Hafford. Yeah, Hafford gets back in the scores column for the first time since a couple trips to the line about seven, eight minutes ago. Right. And that's Sanchez going to the rack. Anthony Sanchez, 80 to 67 in favor of the Volcanoes. 3:40 left third quarter, and Tapscott controls it. And Taylor up ahead. Over to Sanchez for three. Watch out. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming. They're keeping it there. 80 to 70. And Murray for three. Nice. Three. There we go. Murray, he has just had all the answers tonight. Huge I'm back party for Andre 3000. Absolutely. Nice to see him back. Most definitely. And it looks like Tiefenthaler is going to get another run for Vancouver as well. The ball is poked away. Hafford goes up to Murray. Dos puntos. <laughs> An easier effort for him on that one. And there we go, 85-70 Volcanoes. So it seems like they weathered the storm right now. Right. But Salem, they are famous for 
coming back and coming back each yeah. time. Yeah. Not over yet, believe yeah. me. Not even that right. far from it. Sure. And there's Kyle Long. Over to Taylor for three. No such luck. And substitution for the Volcanoes it is. Alex Tiefenthaler in for Shahalis Tapscott. And also in first look for the Sabres. And it's number 52, Travis Brown, 6'3 forward, Western Baptist College. But his debut for this game will have to wait because looks like there's going to be a timeout. Oh, 30 seconds, so we're going to keep it here, Gary. Okay. So as you see this, you, it seems like they weathered this storm from Salem. What must Salem do to put the pressure back on Vancouver? Well, well Sa Salem all of a sudden is out of sync. You know, their, their, their shots obviously aren't dropping, and, and they're just not playing their, their sets at all. It's just kind of a weird scenario where it's almost they're in slow motion, and then they're, made, they're putting up the shots, and they're not dropping. They, they got to do a better job of uh, controlling the boards and uh, really getting those rebounds. Um, they're just out of sync right now, fortunately for us. But with, you know, like your talk about the three-legged stool, Maverick, you know, any of those guys can get hot all of a sudden, and then, you know, we, you still got to play through. Oh, definitely. Well, and then as you look for candidates to become that, you know, that third leg, I mean, is it is it Sanchez? Is it Burton? <laughs> Who's it going to be? Yeah, it probably. I, I would say I'm going to pick Daniel Dean, Mike Taylor, and um, I'm not going to check Burton. I'll say Sanchez. With that yeah, leg. I think you're right. I think Sanchez can get the three pointers going and uh, some of that penetration too. Uh, Burton tonight. I think the Volcanoes have sagged a little more, and he just hasn't had the freedom to do a lot of stuff. Okay, nice three there by Paul. Yeah, Paul Haffer gets that three going, which is real nice. And there we go, Kyle Long. Oh, wide open. Uh, it was a nice penetration, but he just couldn't quite hit it. Salem's had a few that have missed the mark here the last few minutes, yeah. too. And that's the one thing in the IBL. You miss two or three of them, all of a sudden the other team gets going and they get crazy. Yeah, and that's, that's what's well, all of a sudden we're up by 18 now. Yeah, exactly. Nice aggressiveness by uh, Hafford. Yeah, Hafford working hard. And the ball is out on Long, it looks like. And so on the floor for the Volcanoes, Tarver, Murray, Tiefenthaler, Hafford, and Carlisle. And for the Sabres, it is Long, it is Dean, it is Taylor, it is Brown. Oh, wow. And there was two right there. 90 to 70. Floodgates are opening a little bit here, Gary. Yep. Let's see if Salem can answer back. And Daniel Dean, travel though. <laughs> he had the right idea. He did. Just a little, little too anxious. Yeah, one step too many, huh? All right, so there's Murray. Over to Tiefenthaler for three. Nope. Not quite. All right, Sanchez up ahead. Does the spin cycle, has Tiefenthaler to beat. He does draw the foul though. So it looks like Sanchez will be going to the line. Yeah, Tief, that's, uh, I think that's gonna be his fourth foul. Unofficially, I've been keeping track. Okay, I'll forgive you. <laughs> okay. I'll forgive you on that one. So Sanchez, first one's in and out though. Yeah, wow. Yeah, see, now we're getting into the fourth quarter, Gary. You yep. really don't want to let this one get away. You no. Don't, you don't want to let it stay at 20 for too long when that next quarter starts either. All right. He hits the second one, though. And a minute to go. Let's see if Vancouver can get another nice uh, couple possessions to uh, end this quarter. And that Tarver's going to work there on, on Dixon. On Brown, actually. And he gets the foul. Yeah, they were doing some wrestling, Gary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were doing some wrestling, is what you call that. And I think Jake's going to have to ice up after the night. I think so, too. More than ice up. <laughs> yep. Icy hot hello. Yeah, he's feeling it. So he is going to the line, though, Mr. Carlisle. He is going to the line. 
shooting two. And once again, the, the crowd fights. <laughs> There you go. Nice. First one is good. And the coaching staff got a little smile out of them. <laughs> so that's pretty nice. Maybe they're talking icy hot, too. Yeah, I, I know they're talking icy hot. Look at Joe's smile. He's got that icy hot smile. And so here comes the second free throw. And that rolls in, too. So Carlisle, a couple, couple good ones for him there. What a quarter for us on free throws, Maverick. 13 of 14 this quarter alone. I agree. It was a new weapon, a new weapon for the night that I hadn't seen in a while like that. And, uh, yeah, just very good discipline. Yeah. Discipline of opening that up. So 92-71, it's 30 seconds to go. Tiefenthaler for three. There's the old Tief. Wow, what a statement, too. That's right. That's right. I remember a game three years ago. Uh, at, uh, in McMinnville versus Yamhill, and he buried six of seven from the three. Wow. He's got a stroke, real legit stroke, especially for 6'10". And there's Long wanting to answer back, but no. And Volcano basketball, two and a half seconds to go. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we could still score. Yeah. There it is, up ahead to Hafford. Oh, not quite. All right, so after three quarters, it's Volcanoes 95, Sabres 71, and we're going to take a small break, but we'll be coming back, and it'll be good times. There's one quarter to go. Will the Sabres close? You're going to have to come back and find out. So coming back real soon, 95-71, Volcanoes. And welcome back the O'Connell Sports Center on the campus of Clark College, Vancouver Volcano Basketball, the best in Clark County that, uh, what I say, money can buy? You didn't say that yet, but you sure. can say it. Best entertainment in Clark County, bar none. Yes. And it is 95-71, uh, the Volcanoes looking to stretch that perfect home record out versus the, the Salem Sabres. And you're looking at the stat sheet, and you had one huge eye-popping stat. Tell me what it is. It's great to have Mr. 3000 back, Andre Murray. Gee, 39 points, Maverick, 39 points. And I'll put, point out that third quarter once again, we, uh, we scored 13 of 14 from the charity line. Wow. And it was like you were saying, Gary, that's what it was about. It was trying to get points a different way. And what's Murray looking like from the uh, free throw line? Free, free throw line, he's um, seven of eight. Yeah. You know, nice night, four of four from three point land, 14 of 19 from the field. Nine assists. getting better than that. Nine assists. Holy smokes. Geez, uh, was he selling pitas <laughs> out there too? Boy, if, if uh, I'm glad he's back. Like you said, anytime Andre Murray is on the team, it's a good thing. But when he's playing like this, wow. Yeah, I agree with you. It's uh, been a great game for him. And there he goes for two more. <laughs> Woo! Murray count, 41. It's too bad the crowd didn't have like a, a bunch of sign placards like they used to do for each row in right, Seattle. Right. Oh, we are just playing. And there's Tarver they, Daylight. Bam. Salem's going to have to, you know, call a timeout or get things going. You yeah, know, really you just, uh, it just kind of, it's kind of like that ride at the fair when the, the roof falls out. I mean, the, oh, yeah. I mean, the ceiling, I mean, not the ceiling, the floor. The falls floor. falls out the from floor. under you. It all falls down. It, it does. all falls down, I tell you. And that's what it did. So 99-73 in favor of the Volcanoes, 11 minutes to go. This keeps up. I'm, I'm sure we'll see the rocket. Oh, yeah. Yeah, rocket watch. Rocket watch, yeah. Let's put up rocket watch. Too bad. Well, and the one thing I would like him to improve on, Gary, is um, just his field goal percentage. He's like 36% for the year from the field. Last He got the start last week against Japan, but I think the nerves got him. He was 2 of 12 from the field. Right. So, uh, And I know he's better than that, Gary. He has a, a real legitimate stroke. So. Yeah, there, there's the rocket right there. I mean, leading the, the Nippon Tornadoes last year, averaging over 18 points a game. So he's capable of it. He's just, you know, been a little nervous in his uh, IBL debut for the Volcanoes. Yeah, for the Volcanoes. He's had a, yeah, he's had a tough year because, like you were telling me, uh, Coach Navarro was telling you, the practice he's been money. I mean, he's right. got three points, been good. I saw him at the training camp. And he was a great stroke. Right. He gets in here, and it just one or two seem to go off, and then it just kind of goes bajiggity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, 
ding, ding, ding. You finally used that word. I can't believe it. Well, you know, Gary, you, you got to tame the tiger before you let it out of its cage. <laughs> Wow, I'm impressed to use that word already. <laughs> already? It's been halfway through the season. For me, that's amazing. Are you kidding? So there's Murray down low there to Gio Bain. And uh, Gio wasn't looking for it. Murray's looking to add to those uh, assist totals. Navarro's going to take a quick 30, so we'll just keep that here. At least it should be 30. He uh, signaled at 30. Let's see what David Gonzalez does. Yeah, he signals. Is it 30? It looked like a football signal to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looked like offensive interference or something, pass interference. I'm not sure. So uh, they're going to keep things going. But I'll tell you what, Gary, we're just going to keep it here. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll talk about a few things here. So Navarro right now, he's telling the Volcanoes, just keep this train rolling, right? Oh, yeah. He's not going to give up. He wants to have it intense. He wants to get into the you know mid-hundreds, knowing Joe. And, and, and you rightly so, because the second half of the season's going to be more intense. It's going to be other teams coming at you. And, and so you can't just, you know, say, hey, we're up by 24. Let's just play casual. That's not Joe Navarro style. You're going to play with intensity and finish it out strong. Well, and that's the thing. It's about gaining momentum, because we talked about the top of the broadcast, um, what this means for the team as you go into the second half of the season. And uh, as you're developing your second half of the season, all of a sudden you're getting your, you should be getting your last roster pieces, you know, those last overseas guys. And right. You know, hopefully you've gone through some injuries and some disgruntled playing time issues and ironed those out. So this is kind of the start of that next chapter. Yeah, and I think what Joe, you know, he's not going to look past uh, this game, but he's, uh, he's not going to look past Japan either because Japan is one of those teams yeah, are they good or are they not? Or are they going to surprise us? So he wants to make sure that intensity is there going into Sunday's game. Well, sure. And the other thing is, Gary, a lot of these guys are coming back from injury. I mean, Murray, believe it or not, it's only his second game back. So it's like he's got to get his run back and he's got to get his IPL legs under him. Gio just got back, so he needs to play. I mean, who doesn't need to play? <laughs> no ping pong we were, game there. We were down to eight people. And, uh, you know, Carlisle's got to keep trying to plug through things and plow through things, I should say. Right. Kevin West wants his minutes. And right. Yeah. So. you got, you got to play through those injuries, like you're saying, and you got to play through the, through the tough times, and that's going to make you a lot better player come playoff time. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then when you get a, a season like this, and, yeah, this one might be in the bag, you think. you got to finish it strong and get ready for Japan, like you said. They have another trip to Bellingham coming up still, Gary. Right, right. And they're two games back of them, and they really don't want to go back farther than that. Nice, nice three there by Paul. Yeah, good to see him getting going now. Yeah. The uh, second all-time IBL leading scorer. <laughs> love saying that. I just love saying that when he's on our squad. Oh, that's pretty neat. We know you got the first time, you know, uh, first all, you know, with Pip, uh, you know, a few years ago and up to last year. And we just kind of breed these guys, don't we? Yeah, I agree. Well, you've been in the league that many years as a franchise. Holy smokes, look, there's yeah. two. You're bound to acquire some talent. And there he is, Paul Hafford, bringing up another one. They're not even guarding him. That's amazing. No, Salem kind of ran out of gas a little bit. Um, the game two weeks ago, Vancouver also looked pretty gassed in the third quarter. Right. And in the fourth, too. But it just seems they have better legs tonight. Yeah, yeah. Something about them, they're, they're just a lot more uh, agility, a lot more uh, spark to them. Yes, I agree with you on that. Starkey going to the hole. So 107.79. And I think what happened for Salem, um, besides Daniel Dean, they just haven't had the production from the other guys. Uh, Burton's just been really quiet. Right, right. And, of course, you know, that's, this is where you're missing, you know, Corey Largent with his 24 points. Well, sure. That's a good point, Gary, because you had 24 up there, and it's... It'd be a four-point game. Yeah, exactly. So, uh... Not sure what happened there, but you know, once again with the IBL, anything can happen and does. Right. So each night, 24-hour, two-hour notice, you don't know who's there and who isn't. So yeah. everyone's got to be prepared for some battle. And Murray coming back in the game. And see, normally, Gary, he wouldn't be coming back in, but he needs to get that work in. He, he needs does. to get that rhythm still. Yeah. And he might be working on a few outside shots now, if you ask me. It seems like he knows how to go to the hole and use the backboard. So I think he wants to get his stroke back. Yeah. Just my take. We'll see what happens. I think you're right. 41 points, which is a great game. But, you know, he does need to put, put some more on the boards there. 
and he might have some playmaking ability and some things like that too. So Sanchez rebound and put back in there. 109-81, 733 to go. And there we go. Carlisle, he is checked. Yeah, nice block by uh, Graziano coming over there. And now J.R. Moore coming in for Gio Bain. I'm thinking it's probably the end of the night for him. I think they want to kind of um, ease him in a little more than they do Andre Murray. Yeah, and Gio, Gio was kind of, you know, uh, minute by minute here uh, today on game day. So I think that, you know, he played better than I think uh, Joe thought he would. And now, he, yeah, he just needs to rest him now. There's no sense, you know, when you have a lead like this to keep him uh, playing and risk another injury. Well, and Sanchez to Starkey there, it's just kind of been the story of the night. There's a flash of daylight there, and then as soon as you try to recognize it, the window shuts. And there was a pass, Carlisle over to J.R. Moore. Nice work by the post guys. So seven minutes to go, 111.81. And uh, Graziano over there to 52. And that is Travis Brown, the three no good for him. And Murray once again, seeing what's real. And not quite. And here we go, Sanchez back out again. Passes off, number 40, no oh, foul on the play. Yeah. All right, Gary, so let's look ahead a little bit. Okay. So, um, the Volcano's eight and three if they hold on to this lead with 6.30 to go, 30 points. Safe bet, not impossible, but they hold on to this one and go to nine and three. What's left? What do you think they need to achieve? What, are, what do they need to be clicking on going into the playoffs as they go into these this last month? Well, I, I think, uh, believe it or not, even though we have a big lead, we, we need to still shore up our, our, our defense. Um, you know, I, I think we still need to uh, uh, do a better job underneath uh, with the boards. We're doing a good job, obviously, tonight. But playoff times can get a little chippy, and that's where we need to be a little more intense. Yeah, you are totally right on that one. Chippy is not even the half of it. <laughs> right, right. I was being nice, Maverick. Yeah, it's an all-out war. So Kevin West is going to get in here, and all that's left is the rocket. The rocket. So we can start Rocket Watch. Okay. I know it's one of your favorite segments, the watch segment, <laughs> since we've been on the air year four, and we're still watching. Rocket Watch or last year Nakashima Watch. Well, three years of Nakashima Watch. So I think just by the amount of times that we did it, that's still our number one watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Rocket Watch, though, sounds like really cool. Yeah, it does. Ooh. What's a Rocket Watch? What are they doing? What are they, what are they talking about? What are they doing? I like that. I like rockets. So 111 to 85, fourth quarter. Trying to put this one to bed and uh, as well oh, keep the nice ball pass. keep the ball moving. Oh. Jake so, with no rebound and gets fouled. And he's going to the line. He says, yep, Hafford, I blew your assist. Sorry. Yeah. I think he's feeling better now. A little smile on Jake. Oh, yeah, he does look better. Uh, Kevin West is going to be coming into the game after the timeout. But uh, while we're doing that, we're going to go to break and uh, try to entertain you for the last 538 of this game. So your score, the Volcanoes 111, the Sabres 85. And welcome back, FETV Channel 11, home of the Vancouver Volcanoes, Vancouver's first and still first professional sports team. Sports teams come and go in Vancouver, but the Volcanoes stay the same. Nine years and counting. Gary Akiyama. That's a great record, nine years. Can you believe that? Well, and it's weird that you and I have been working for this organization together for six of those. Wow. <laughs> yeah, where's the time go, Gary? Yeah. There was a time where you and I and my kids were hanging signs up. I remember that, <laughs> the, the, good, the good old days. Outside Mountain View High School, and our worker crew was about five people. Yeah, like, hey, where's the duct tape? You got any more duct tape? <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, and I think you had to drive around the campus, uh, right. Mountain View High School, to uh, do some zip ties, yep, yep. stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't quite miss those, Gary. No, I don't either. I mean, it, it is fond memories, though. So, J.R. Moore up ahead to Andre 3000. Whoa, a little pop up there. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, something's up. Uh oh. All right, so uh, in now the silence makes sense to me, Gary. So, there's going to be a full timeout. 
And uh, <laughs> while that's going on, we're going to go to break. And when we come back, hopefully we'll have something for you for on for Andre Murray. So we're going to yes. take, take this to break and see what we can do. And when we come back, we'll give you some information. It's the Volcanoes 111, the Salem Sabres 85. And welcome back to campus of Clark College, the O'Connell Sports Center, home of the Vancouver Volcanoes. And things were going all right for Vancouver until just about a minute ago. Andre Murray, ankle injury. And uh, just came down on it wrong. Gary Akiyama, as you can see, yeah, just not doing so hot. He was able to limp off the court, but uh, tough stuff going on there. No, it's, he's grimacing. It's that right ankle, it, it looks like. And uh, hopefully it's just a bad sprain, but I don't know. It looks... It could be worse than that. I hope not. Yeah, just reaction-wise. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to think about it. And it looks like uh, team owner, general manager, Brian Hunter, is going to get some ice. It looks like something out of the training room for them, for him to help him out these last few minutes, maybe get the swelling down and try to stabilize things. And uh, I will remember, will recall Gary during the championship run 2011, um, he had, he played the three games hurt. Right, he did, yep. He played him hurt, you know. He was even riding a stationary bike in between timeouts to stay loose. And in those last two games, he did a great job because he was kind of on one leg, Gary, and he worked his playmaking abilities more and was such an, an integral part of that run to the title. Yeah, yeah. He, he was de definitely after the, we won the title, as we talked to him later, yeah, he was definitely in pain but just needed to play through it, wanted to win the championship for for not only the team, but for the city of Vancouver, and that's what a trooper he is. Definitely, very, very loyal guy. A very loyal guy, he's been um, just pure class for the Volcanoes now, coming up on his fourth year, and um, just a, a really good person to be around. So we're hoping yeah. for the best right. as that happens, and um, Brian running by here with some bags, and something tells me the ice is gonna be hitting. Yeah. In the meantime, though, Andre is- um, At least he's walking on off. It. Yeah. yeah, Tenderly, but at least he's walking. Yeah, that's good news there. We'll take that. And, uh, in the meantime, Tiefenthaler, need to take off the undershirt for some reason. <laughs> A couple of va 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 booms out of the crowd. <laughs> I don't think they'd say that if it was one of us doing it, Gary. Uh, I, I think they wouldn't even be here. And there's Murray <laughs> yeah, going yeah, into the into locker, locker room. room. Yeah. And um, hopefully we can try to get you something at the end of the game on that and let you know what's going on. And uh, if you come on down here Sunday, if you come to a Volcanoes game, you'll be able to find out firsthand what's going on. So it's nice to watch us. We love you for doing that. But also come on down at least once or twice for a season. It's uh, great entertainment. So Tiefenthal are coming in for Carlisle. So 440 yet uh, left. Rocket Watch. What are we thinking, Gary? Give me, give me a time. See, I, I give you a time. I will give you a time of... Uh, Gee, is he even going to play? I'll say three minutes. I was going to say three as well. Kevin West with a little put in there. Yep. There he goes. Yep. Mr. Mr. Fourth quarter. Kevin West. Yeah, his athleticism really shows when you get into these kind of situations. Yep. And I was really glad to see him get some run early too. So Mike Taylor off. Yeah, Salem. It just just the floor dropped out from under him, Gary. Yeah. And they were just like, really. How'd that happen? Well, it happened so quickly, but it happened so differently with us going to the charity line there, you know, in, in the third quarter where we're 13 of 14, and that quietly kind of, you know, put the game away. Well, yeah, because they, they ran it to, they cut the deficit to the three points right when that third quarter started, and then uh, lo and behold, that's what happened. And uh, yes, foul on the play. Daniel Dean's still working hard, and like I was saying earlier, it doesn't matter what what the deficit or the lead is. He's uh, the motor's still running for him. Yeah, most definitely. So Dean going to the line for two, and and if you're Salem, uh, it it looked like you kind of solidified things. This one's kind of a setback. What do you do if you're Salem, Gary? Well, I think what you do is you just really just got to shake this game off and, and, and just go from there. I mean, you can't dwell on this game. You can't think about, you know, the, the mistakes as much and just, just go for it. Pits them at four and six now where they could have been um, five and five. But uh, 
you know, they, they have some games coming up. Uh, in fact, I think they play, actually, they play... Uh, tomorrow? Or tomorrow, or yeah. Sunday? they play, yeah. No, they play, I believe it's tomorrow. Okay. Well, the way the IBL schedule is, Gary, there's three tomorrow and there's three on Sunday. Right, right. So uh, that's been a really nice job this year, uh, showcasing all the teams on a, a regular schedule. There, Because there used to be a couple of those Tuesday night peekaboo games or <laughs> things like that, which uh, were really hard to draw to, I think. So now the league has done a great job of putting it through. And speaking of great job, it's the Rocket. He took off, baby. There, there he Get goes. the first one. Nice smile on his face, too. Nice for Yasu to get that yeah, going. That, that helps out. Good yeah, confidence yeah, for him. it does. So let's see what happens. So Tarver behind the back to Kevin West. Ooh. He was fouled. Yeah, Tarver was that behind the back or between the legs? You know, looking at the schedule here, Maverick, and you know who Salem plays tomorrow? They play and Bellingham. have a have a home game against Japan. Okay. So All Japan's right. going to play back to back. They play. They'll play us uh, Sunday, and then they're playing Salem uh, tomorrow at Salem. Hmm. Well, and remember last week, they only beat them by 12, like you were saying. So Salem, like you were saying, they have to shake it off, and they have to do a very quick job of it and rebound. And hopefully Largent's back for them tomorrow, and they get back on the home court. And they're tough over there. They beat us over there yeah, a couple yeah. weeks ago. So, yeah, they've had about uh, three or four real solid efforts in a row. And uh, tonight, sometimes that happened, Gary. And like I said, their first half was much better than when they were here two weeks ago. But um, they just kind of lost some some oomph when uh, after that uh, free throw line stuff pushed the lead up to 10 in the third quarter. Yeah, nice hustle there by Rocket getting the rebound. Yep, he's filling the stat sheet up and that's a good sign. And also the Salem Sabres got some bench guys in there. Uh, number 12, Brian Barr, 6'4 forward from BYU. Well, it says BYU University, so I wonder I wonder if there's a BYU in a BYU University. You know, it is the Ibble. It's, yeah. That's and <laughs> you are Google Gary who's supposed to know small college stuff. <laughs> so that'll be homework assignment for the next time we play him. How's that? Okay, we'll do that. Is there such a place as BYU University? University. Okay. So I'm sure it would be in Utah. Yeah, yeah. Be, well, the BYU, though, has a... Uh, oh, they have one in Hawaii. They do. They? they have one in Hawaii campus, BYU-Hawaii. That's, that's right. That's right. All right, so Kyle Long putting the spin cycle on J.R. Moore. And there we go. Brown over to Graziano for three. Not quite. So at the end of the bench in there for the Sabres now with Mike Taylor and uh, Long trying to play out this game. A minute 49 to go. And... And that's the thing, and J.R. Moore. J.R. Moore. But now you just want help, Gary. And it's so frustrating that the game was in hand and Murray had just came back in the game trying to get it. that timing ah. back and whatnot. It's uh, just a risky game sometimes. And uh, the three is good for Brian Barr. So he gets in the game, he gets a look. So good for him, good to build the confidence. And, and they'll get some time tomorrow against Japan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the whole squad will, Coach, Coach Freeman there, Coach Becerra. They have a job to do. Oh. oh. I thought there was going to be a shooter's bounce. <laughs> it just didn't happen. And there we go. So there's Taylor. Not quite. And he gets his rebound, though. And there we go. And Graziano does get fouled. He's going to go to the line. So he's had a few productive minutes tonight. Wyatt Graziano shows a little bit of shooting touch, too, for the Sabres. So as we were talking, um, what other IBL things are we talking about this weekend? Portland's in Texas for that important two-game road trip. Right. It seems like Salem and Portland now have to fight out for that three and four seed. Yeah, that's going to be a, a battle there. We were in the beginning. You thought, okay, it's going to be pretty much a three-way race between us and Bellingham and Portland. Portland's kind of fell off the table. That's the two games down in Texas, uh, down in the Houston area. I think it's a key game for their season to uh, better position themselves. I agree with you totally. They they need to split at least, but they could really use a sweep. Yeah, and uh, they had a heartbreaker on Memorial Day at Bellingham. Evan Madison hit the three-pointer with 0.5 seconds left. Heartbreaker for Portland. Portland had a 12-point lead, Gary, with like uh, three minutes to go. And uh, I think it was even more with six minutes, and they just couldn't quite close it. Wow. 
That, that's you know that's the International no, Basketball no, League for you. Any time, any game, someone can do that. Well, and talk about home court advantage. We've talked about our home court record ad nauseum because that's what you like us to do, being in Vancouver. But <laughs> you look at Bellingham, Gary, and despite last year's Salem team coming in there and beating them, yes, it it that's it. I can't recall a home loss outside of them once or twice or Olympia maybe once. Yeah, that, that's you're right, Maverick. That's about it. We have never won in that building, and, and I don't know if Portland has. Uh, boy, I know we have it. It's a very, very tough venue up oh, you there. You talk about a monkey on the back. Well, yeah. it's a long ride. It's a long yeah. car ride there, first of all, and you have an hour or two to try to get, uh, get free from sitting in a car for six hours, and you know how that goes. And, right. And we're old dudes. <laughs> so <laughs> imagine even younger guys, it doesn't affect them as much, but mentally, you know, it's – it's hard to get there and, you know, do that. Right. So I think that's a big part of it. But we got to go back there one more time, and I hope we can get that monkey off our back because it's going on like five years now, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Time to break the streak. Yeah. So uh, another Volcano win. Good job. What do you think the key was tonight, Gary? Well, I think the key was, you know, uh, they, they did what they are supposed to do, but played aggressive, played quickly, didn't let the defense set up for the most part. But I love the penetration. The penetration, I thought, was key with Andre Murray and Josh Tarver going in there and getting those free throws. And that, um, I'll go ahead. Yeah, we, we had good picks as, as well, but I think the, the key was, well, obviously, the free throws and then the, just penetration. Well, and that third quarter was pivotal when the free throw line stuff was happening. I mean, that, that was where it was, Gary, because they took the Salem charge and they deflected it and then made their move. So... We're going to have a player of the game. We are going to get one. Gary is going to get me, Josh Tarver. Oh, is who he's going to get me. So, uh, go Beavs. We'll be back. And there's uh, Beaver Love right there, Gary, <laughs> Burton, and Tarver. So get over there and break that up before Josh disappears. All right. So we'll be right back. Volcano victory. And uh, the final on that one is the Volcanoes, 125, the Salem Sabres, 96. Back real soon. And welcome back. Channel 11 FVTV, the home for your Vancouver Volcano basketball during this 2013 IBL campaign. So the Volcanoes, they're undefeated at home again. And uh, player of the game, well, a co-player of the game. I'm going to say Josh Tarver. How are you doing out there? Great effort tonight. Uh, I wish I was trying to make some layups, but as long as I get the team running and get them under control, that's, that's my job. So... That's all I'm out there to do. There you go. 13 points, 17 assists. Both of us were surprised when we looked at this. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me a time when you had assist totals like that where you were surprised and they were a lot? Uh, it's probably it's been a while since like my freshman year of college probably. It's been a long time. <laughs> Who was that but game against? I have. I can't even remember. Oh, I, can't. I, thought, I thought you were going to pull it out of the yeah, hat. Yeah, I don't even know. So, <laughs> it definitely wasn't 17 assists, though. So talk to me about the third quarter. The thing I noticed the most, Josh, was all of a sudden we were going to the free throw line a bunch. Was that a mindset coming out of half? How did that develop? Yeah, we definitely talked about uh, getting into the lane and forcing issues. And last, you know, the quarters before that, we took a bunch of jump shots, kind of let them back into the game because we started. they stopped falling. But we were determined to get to the free throw line or get layups. And once that opened up for us, then we had the threes, and Paul got going, and we ran plays for him, which got me more assists, and Dre was in him, which got me assists. So that's how it happened. That's good stuff. Yeah. And this is your third year with Vancouver, but yeah. it kind of feels like your first because three years ago you came on with about a quarter of the season left, yeah. led us to that playoff push huge. Last year you were good to go, and then an ankle turn. Yeah, that led definitely. to quite a bit of the season lost. Yeah. And here you are, though, healthy coming in. And what is this team like? I mean, compared to the past units, there's a ton of talent. Uh, it's, it's definitely different from last year. You know, was, from the championship team, there's a lot of the same players. You know, Jake came back, Pip. Um, you know, we added Paul Hopper to the shooter. So um, it's just we have the chemistry going right now, and that, that's pretty good as long as I can – keep the plays going to keep everybody under control when we don't get out of hand and I don't think many teams can beat us yeah and it sounds like Jeremiah Dominguez coming in 
going to yeah. help out some. And then, have you played with him, being Portland guys and Oregon I've, guys? I have never played with Jeremiah. Only I've only played against him. So okay. Yeah, but he'd definitely be some help because we don't have a backup point guard, or I mean, even play alongside him or whatever it is. Just to have a four guard rotation would be good. And isn't it strange? Two weeks for the last two weeks, eight people suited up only, yeah. and tonight a full count. How does yeah. that happen? Uh, surprising. I don't know how it happens, but as long as the more guys, the better it is in the game for us. So. Okay, and, yeah. and last question. Give us, give us what we need to do here in the second half of the season, making that push for the playoffs. Where do you see the improvement needed? I definitely think in the offensive rebounding. Uh, I don't know what the count was tonight, but it definitely wasn't good. And I know that Bellingham at Blake Poole, he can rebound. And, you know, just like the Slam and, and the Chinooks, you know, they uh, they can rebound. <laughs> I, I saw you say that, you know, so that's something we got to work on. That sounds good to me. Well, and if anyone's going to do it, it's you from that guard position, Josh. Yeah, I got to so, do a little better job on that. Well, like we call you, the guy who drives the bus for this team, it's Josh Tarver, co-player of the game tonight. So we're going to say goodbye now, and we'll be seeing you Sunday. Uh, Nippon Tornado's coming back. Josh is going to be ready. Yeah. Dominguez is going to be here, and it's going to be a good time. So thank you very much for being here. And uh, once again, your final, the Vancouver Volcanoes 125, Salem Sabres 96. Good night from the O'Connell Sports Center. Thank you for watching FBTV Channel 11.